Malcolm said, you can call it a Negro revolution, you can call it a non violence, right. but it was still violence because it's it was white violence against exactly. black people. That was opened up against to the world. So you had, you had grown adult white people attacking little black children. Right. That's why they made fun of it in China and Russia and countries like that. So it's part of the revolution too. Also, the revolution going on in Latin America and Caribbean, Fidel Castro. Right. Okay? And then Fidel Castro and um, Che Guevara, they sent revolutionaries, a lot of them Afro Cubans, over to Africa to have fight in those revolutions. I've seen a lot of revolution yeah. was even when, uh, when Hitler was around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a. That was, that was more of a white revolution, but I'm talking about the revolution for us, for black people, that was in the 60s. Because it affected all parts of Africa. Right. When do Ghana, when do all these people start getting their independence? Patrice Lumumba in the Congo, in yeah. the Belgians. Yeah. That happened in 1960. Yeah. Okay, so you look at all the Jews in the year, Tanzania, Tanzania, all That's where I was going to go, say what, uh, what Hitler, like, at first, you know, America, anything, anybody great that's, that's standing up against oppression, they're going to try to make it look so bad, but when they die, they glorify them. Mm -hmm. And at first, you know, Hitler growing up, I was like, man, Hitler, this, now I ain't saying what he did was right, right, you know what I'm saying? But he made a statement that, that, that stuck with me when he spoke, and when he was speaking to uh, his army, he made a statement, he said, if blacks knew who the real Jews were, they, were, they wouldn't allow certain things to continue to happen to them. And it made me think, like, is this why he he started his own revolution against the Jews? You know what I'm saying? Like, because when he said it, kind of messed me up. Like, what did he mean by that? You know what I'm saying? Okay. So then when you think about it, what go on today and a lot of stuff and what was happening, and then you go back and you listen to what Kanye was saying what about the choice thing, which I understood a little bit what he meant with that. You know what I'm saying? Just God took him out of hand. You know what I'm saying? He says, he says a, a, a mental thing versus right. just, you know, action is more of a mental thing. So I, I, it made me kind of think about that and kind of put some stuff together and kind of piece together. You know okay. What well, I want to respond to yeah. both things you said. Uh, the thing about Hitler, right. well, Hitler was a contradiction right. in the sense that Hitler was also killing Afro Germans. Right. So if he makes a statement about white Jews that are practicing that African religion, right. if we talk about him killing them, those white German Jews, right. well, we also talk about four or five hundred uh, Afro-Germans, people that are of African descent that were in Germany that they were exterminating also. Yeah. They were knocking them out faster than they were the Jews. Mm. So that brings me back to, <laughs> you know, Someone like him, the white man, he might have made an accurate statement to some degree, can never, can never be trusted. Because yeah. same time I'm saying this, I'm killing blacks. And see, I, I never studied to go deep off into it. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah the know, third right now. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? They, they had a little for us. Yeah. They may acknowledge some things, like the chakras came out. Right. After, okay. But if I acknowledge, like saying, I acknowledge y'all ain't been rock and roll, but it's white now. Yeah. But what's different? Yeah. And what, what you say about it, my thing with Kanye is, uh, I don't know if I would say he's legitimate and it's because of this. He's not coming from the world Tupac Shakur comes from. Right, right. <laughs> right. Not, not, okay, he's not coming from the world, so I'd say most death comes from. Right. He's not coming from the world Talib Kweli comes from. Right. He's not coming from the world that Immortal Technique comes from. Right. He's not coming from where the dead prayers come from. He's coming from the world it's somewhat imaginary. Y'all, I'm black. He's not even coming to where Kamala come from, even though they're both from Chicago. Yeah. So my point is, he, he grew up in poverty. Yeah. Ah, he grew up in poverty. His choices have been made on his choices. His mom was a professor. And he had his dad always in his life, and they've always been middle class. Yeah. He didn't grow up in the south side of Chicago. We can relate to him because he chose to hang out. Right. But you're not, come on. You're I mean, not, you're not, you yeah, don't exactly. fully understand the. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, to a degree, because he's black, so there's a there is this ideal to where he can relate to the black experience, regardless whether you have money or not, you're uh, uh, systematically, academically educated or not. There is this thing where just because of your black blackness, you're penalized. However, the contradiction because he does stuff for shock value. Right. I get that. Right. Okay, it's to make money, right. but uh, he's more concerned about not trying to so much create. And not worry about white people, what white establishment does. He's more like to my, how can I be a part of the white establishment? Mm -hmm. 
you know, and then, really, and that's that's, that's, the part, that's the part that I don't agree with because when when he did make that, like I knew where he was coming from. My whole thing with it is, of course, put it like this: white people come from black people. Oh, if you want to go historically, yeah, exactly. Now take this out. Now, now, yeah, I ain't gonna get too deep into that. My thing is, white people come from black people, and I'm all down with the revolution all the way. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is. You know how you uh, old, uh, old school black woman tell you I brought you in this world, I take you out. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. You know what I'm saying? Because you 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 so against us, y'all like rebellious children. That's how I look at it. Hmm. Like rebellious. They try to say we rebellious, but they're more of the rebellious children. And if we don't discipline them in some type of form or fashion, they're gonna continue to rebel and go against it. That's how I look at it. Okay, but how was he disciplined? Nah, not him. him. Oh. I'm talking about, that's just my point. Oh, okay. Because I'm about to say, they disciplined him. Yeah, nah, that's, nah, that's how I feel. The fact that his wife is who she is, yeah. Yeah. says that he's been disciplined. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> the nah, fact that, that you me, say, yeah. you do a song called Gold Digger, yeah. but when you play in Sweden or you play in Poland yeah. to a lot of white audience, you're so embarrassed because all these white people say, she ain't messing with no gold nigga that you said, Bro, bro, in the middle of the song because you heard because all these white people are saying nigga, yeah. your song, your, song. To your face, why you? That's that's a country. Exactly. Can't, we can't do that. Can't you gotta be real. If you going if that's okay, why you getting upset? Why they say these your fans? Right. Yeah, they don't pay tickets to come to your concert. <laughs> yeah. You on stage, but you, bro, bro, why are you changing? They say nigga. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. they say it. Yeah. They say it both ways. Yeah. Still, probably because they white. That mean that blackness mean a little bit more than even. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So yeah. my thing is, are we gonna be who we really say we are, or are we gonna do this? See, I can't. I'm one of these people. I can't. I'm not a chameleon, so to speak. No. I stay the same. Right. I can't change it this way. Right. To make this make this group feel comfortable, I'm comfortable talking to. But I'm talking to my own people, mm-hmm. white people, Mexican people, Asian people. It stay the same. It stay the same. Mm-hmm. I tell people that yeah. all the day. You gotta be yourself at yeah. all time, regardless. Mm-hmm. And I say, and, and it's crazy because I could be myself. Like I could talk right like, all day in front all of day. a group of white people all day, and it'll be my people that feel more embarrassed. Yeah, and right? feel some type of way. Yeah, and I'll be like, you shouldn't feel embarrassed. They the ones that should feel some type of way. But they'll give me more respect at the yeah. end of the day than my own people. You will feel right. some type of way. That's but right. then when they see me, they, hey, how you doing? Yeah, that woo. Cause they see that oh he ain't no he ain't no dumb negro. And then too, well, he's not a nigga. Yeah, he's niggas. Yeah. Y'all made men and women. White people made niggas. Yeah, I mean, just I'm just keeping real. Nah, that's that you know, deep. That, deep. That deep. <laughs> you know what? You know what? That, 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 that were made in Africa. That, they were made in America. Yeah, so when real. people ask me about it, I said, white people. Okay, because if I say God made men and women, mm-hmm. and human beings, everybody agrees with that. Right. Okay. Well, white people made niggas because niggas were made in America. Mm-hmm. They were made in Africa. They were made in Australia. I can name anywhere black people are in terms of origin. Mm-hmm. They were made in Mexico. And you had old Mexican in Mexico. Those were black people. Yeah. They didn't call themselves niggas. I was like, when someone else defines your reality or defines you by a label, they define your reality because your actions will carry out the reality that they define you as. Mm-hmm. Self destruction, when that song was done by PE, KRS1, and all those. Yeah. Deep yeah. concept, cool. self destruction. Yeah. You hear the first? No one used the N word. Go back and play it back and forth. Those reasons. Because when you talk to KRS or you hear Chuck D, they say, well, that would if, if we would, if we call ourselves that, the work, we already destructed. Mm-hmm. So, how are you going to say about self destruction if you already speaking words that are admitting and telling the world that you already, destruction is already happened? So, if I, whenever I point one and three coming back at me, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just saying philosophically speaking. Nah, so we can take it on, on various levels, you know, and my nephew, I have a nephew that's hip hop, he does hip hop. I break in down on a lot of stuff. Yeah. Or I just say, oh, no, you know, you come, oh, check out that beat. I said, well, that's such and such from, from Phase On. I got the original album. Yeah. Oh, what? 
Oh, you thought he made that? Yeah. You thought he made this beat? Are you serious? Yeah. Go get every of our bottles that you can find and bring this stuff in here. Yeah. And I will tell you verbatim, I will tell you word for word verbatim, verbatim, what, is, what the beat was stolen, what was sampled, because I own the original. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can tell you what Kanye and Jay-Z got. Oh, yeah. what, what was, yeah. you, ain't, you ain't create nothing. Oh, yeah. okay? This is like Tupac's record said the best. When Tupac's report made the statement, he said, hey, he said, let me tell you something. Ain't nothing to hip hop shit. New. He said, I can go back and be some old blues dude mm -hmm. or some old yeah. funk dude that don't put this in down. So you hear anybody talk, oh, we the new. That's bullshit. Right. He, said, he said, like white folks do. He said, they take our stuff. He said, what we doing in the hip hop? He said, but the only difference is this. We belong to the people that created it. Right. So I can make that claim. Yeah. So if I'm doing a Muddy Waters, if I'm sampling Muddy Waters, yeah. a Highland Wolf, yeah. or, or Al Green, yeah. or Parliament, they in the family though. Yep. Yeah. They part of the family. Exactly. Because that was born out of oppression, that whole music. So therefore, if the, if we're the heirs to the throne mm -hmm. because of what our forefathers did, yeah. then I might want to rap over the beat by, you know, Otis Red and a Bible Woman. Mm -hmm. I just acknowledge it though. I'm not going to steal this shit. Mm -hmm. I'm going to acknowledge that when you read, read the fine print, Oh my, thank you, Mr. Woman. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You see, but a lot of what happened with us, we just gonna wipe people's head. We still know on people shit, trying to make real money, right. not acknowledging. That's why people start getting sued. MC Allen, pop, pop, people start getting torn. Right. Can't touch this. Rick James said, well, you can't. <laughs> not paying me 30 million. Yeah. So I'm just saying, yeah. if you're gonna do that, don't practice other people's habits yeah. against your people. That's why I learned that Don't legacy that. is strong. That's what's happening. Because it's, I see, the I saw with hip hop is, all it is is new age blues. Yeah. That's all it was. That's a good, that's a, that's a good spin on it. Yeah. You, you gotta say, you gotta say new age soul. New you gotta say new age R&B. Yeah. You say new age funk. But I, I, I do, I, I do believe that uh, it's very important that you just acknowledge that because I don't, I didn't like people, one of the reasons why I think it's because I didn't like people this and any black music mm -hmm. of any sort of saying this is just hip hop. No, bro, that ain't an original form mm -hmm. in terms of the way it's been it's been orchestrated to hip hop. ain't none of that original. The first hip hop artist to me, if you want to take it there, because I'm talking about in the book. Oh, by the way, the book's coming out. Uh, the yeah, one yeah. you contribute to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I get into the nitty gritty of hip hop. Yeah. Uh, well, who uses the first hip hop? First hip hop is Louis Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you, I, you, I don't know. Yeah, Little Jordan, major influence on Chuck Berry, James Brown, anybody from the old era, Bob Dylan. Yeah. Um, Pig Meat Martin. Well, Pig Meat Martin, he's 1968. Okay. Here Come the Jew. She's much later. Ooh, that's a long time ago, boy. 1960. He's 19, that's when Pig Meat Martin, Here Comes the Jew. That's hip hop, too. Mm -hmm. This is a form of hip hop before it's hip hop. Yeah. But Louis Jordan, we're talking like 1941. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, you got to have a beat. Mm -hmm. I, I tell people about group out enthusiasts, go listen to a song by Louis Jordan. You put it up on YouTube. I, I call you got to have a beat. Pure hip hop. Yeah, because it was somebody, uh, it might have been him, but I remember I was looking at some, I was Googling some of like when, uh, the first actual rapper. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a while back. They was talking about way before the 80s, way before all that. And I was like, it was somewhere, it might have been, it might have been who you was talking about with it, like, in the 60s or something like that I was looking at. But it just threw me for a loop. I didn't know it was that far back, like way before it just actually blew up like that. You know what I'm saying? Well, I was watching a uh, documentary. That's what it was. Uh, they was talking about like Atlanta, the Atlanta coach, how they blew up and stuff like that. And they went so far back. And they was talking about how people thought they started this and that. And, and they went all the way back to like New York. That's what all. Yeah, you know, went all the way back to New York, and they was like the first hip hop rapper was this and this. And I was like, damn, man, it's been so long. Like we've been really doing music hip hop for a while, and it kind of threw me, like I say, threw me for a loop. Cause all uh, my life, you heard, you've been uh, hip hop started in the early '80s or this and that, or late yes, '80s and stuff like that. And you'll think, or you might have one rapper in the '70s, but well, technically that's true too, though. Yeah, because it, okay. Literally speaking, if we go by the genre of hip hop as hip hop, mm -hmm. it does not start until really late seventies. Mm -hmm. Because we did, if we're gonna if we're gonna go by that, we gotta go by how it was put on record. So a lot of people say Sugar Hill Gang. Yeah. I said the hip hop 
Well, in all actuality, that was the first popular song in hip hop music. Popular. I'm not saying it was the first, because if we want to talk about the first, the first hip hop record opened up when the hip hop, if you want to call it the genre of hip hop, was done by a funk R&B band called Fatback Band. Mm-hmm. You know, put looking for that good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not hip hop, but that's they did the first hip hop song. They featured a guy named Washington. His last name was Washington. I think his first name was Ted or Tony Washington. There's a song called uh, King Tim the Third. Personality job. Now, Fat Man brought in. Wait, what's the name again? The guy they brought in. Oh, the name of the song is King Tim the Third. Personality job. Yeah. About a Fat Man. Oh, here we go. And then he come on and start freestyle. Yeah. That's the first hip hop rock. It out, it beats the hip hop the the, 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 the Sugar Hill game mm-hmm. by anywhere from three weeks to a month. It came out three weeks to a month before. So on wax. The John River Pop stars with that. Uh, some people say, well, what about cool, uh, DJ Cool Hurt? Mm-hmm. He was instrumental as a turntablist. Mm-hmm. He wasn't rapping. Right. I, said, I said, you got he, hip hop black parties yeah. start with him, which in terms of the elements that create the scratching and the echo and the dubbing that comes out of Jamaica. Mm-hmm. Those, as, those forms of hip hop come from him. Because hip hop, if you break it down scientifically speaking, and we're going that area, then it breaks into different forms. But that rapping style that would become MC, personality jock, King Tim the Third, Fat Bag Band, I own the run. Right. I, I, I own it. I own a copy of it. So, yeah. there were people, as a matter of fact, if you go to the library on, right here at uh, Paul Owens, Dunbar, across the Mountain Wonder Homes, yeah. it's on display. Yeah. In, the, in the case of that, I do like uh, I do these, memor- these memorabilia museums. Yeah. And they got up there for this part work ever made. That's it. People come to take the pictures of no, I got it when I was in seventh grade. So I'm like, my thing with him, I got curious, so I dug deep. And I said, okay, Louis Jordan, I'm Louis Jordan, who's this guy? Jay Brown, I was in front of him, Chuck Berry, yeah. Bob Dylan, look at it. All these people that say, oh, you man. So I was curious. Uh, Fast Domino, everybody was like, take some of Louis Jordan. Fast Domino, I heard of him. Oh, yeah, yeah. one of the kings of rock and roll. Yeah. But the, uh, Louis Jordan was a sax player. Man, he got a song, it's stunning stuff. It fits into the context of the day. Because it's so funky. And he'd be rapping, he was just rhyming in his song, doing rhyme schemes. But when you listen to it, you gotta have a beat. You can, everybody can see the hip hop in terms of MCing and in terms of the actual art of rapping, how we put the lyrical context in, derives from him. I mean, and I mentioned it in the book. Because it's, it's, it's on point. And hip hop, is that what, do you? What artists today do you think are just uh, very meaningful or, or as far as in the, in the culture, as far as delivering messages? And- Woo! Uh, well, it's, to me, Goopy Fiasco, mm-hmm. I get J. Cole's, right. all sort of his stuff. I have to say Kendrick Lamar to a large degree. Joey Badass. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me I turned on him. He t- they say, they say, they say, you might like some of his stuff. I say, are you sure? He said, you're a young cat, but he's pulling out that public enemy. Mm-hmm. Tribe called Quest Tradition. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, let me hear it. So I heard sort of Joey Badass stuff. He's on. This guy that just was killed, X, X, the yeah, on. It's, it's young. Uh, it's, it's music. Somebody let me hear some of that stuff. They said, wait a minute. You, did he have some content stuff? I oh, said, yeah. he does. They said, listen to this. Well, so he so, was sounding like, like a little young Pac on or some stuff. He was kind trying of, to read anyway. Yeah. Oh, there was a, uh, this guy named Jose, let me hear this song. He said, Tim, analyze this and tell me what you think, because I know you will give me a real opinion. Mm-hmm. He let me hear, uh, it's called, is it uh, Look At Me? I think that's the name of it? Yeah. By XM? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Look At Me. Yeah. Okay, I give him props for that. At 20 years old, he's articulating the oppression. He dropped names like Lou, like Emmett Till. Yeah. Now, here's the genius of XM versus Lil Wayne. Right. Lil Wayne's older. Right. Not older than this guy. Lil Wayne took Emmett Till and made him representative and equated Emmett Till to a woman's vagina. Yeah. That's nigga shit. Right. And that, and because I, that's nigga shit. That, yeah, yeah that, that, the reason I say that's nigga shit, yeah. because the same Lil Wayne turned around and said, I don't see racism. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see racism. Right. White people on cool. That's nigga shit. Right. Okay, the fact that you acknowledge Emmett Till that you even know who he was. Says you know that there's racism. Exactly. You we can't do that. 
And then you can't took, do that. Took a picture that was that was that his mother wanted the world to see. Yes. Of how the like, force image wise of what's being done. Of first mm-hmm. just talking. And her, but she wanted the image to be seen of how they're doing the black children. You right. took that and and belittled it. You know what I'm saying? To a woman's vagina. To a woman's vagina. God, that's that, sick, bro. When I heard that, I was like, man, this dude. dude. Yeah, he, and he, after he, that, you kind of really, if you really pay attention, it started to just yeah. out there because you can't do that. Yeah. XXO talks about Emmett Till in his home. Mm-hmm. Look at me. It's mentioned his name because he's talking about the lynching of black people. Mm-hmm. So you're telling me this kid. That's 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Was doing whatever study he was doing. Now, I know he had, he, had, he had a rough background. Uh, is that the one where he's in the classroom? And then he starts going into the speech. And then, is uh, that one? And then at the end, he did the hanging. Yes. Yeah. The white girl. Yeah. When he was reversing the role. Yeah, he wanted to. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he did that. I like raised it. a lot of people. Yeah. But <laughs> I think that's, that's brilliant. Since it, now, I understand mm-hmm. the troubled background because of the environment. And though somebody was trying to get, was, he was getting knowledge, mm-hmm. but, he, but he was, sometimes you had it like this. I guess Tupac is similar. You get into a young brother, he's trapped, and you got, people see his genius, but the people around him, they're jealous, mm-hmm. they're envious, they don't want him to rise up. Mm-hmm. But there's somebody else that he comes in contact with that's like high knowledge itself. Right. They tap him, they put him on, so that makes him stronger because he's coming with this now. So everybody else see that they already know he got all the potential because can't nobody flow like him and all of this like kind of like Tupac was in the sense and he starts to rise then envy and jealousy gets more and more and you think you better than so that crab in the barrel syndrome takes out yeah we we'll get it like you know you got one of the people that give it well they follow them jealousy and people tell them you gotta move away from that area yeah. you can't stay over there no more bro people it don't work like when people make statements like you know. Black black people, black people uh, love you or black people. I'm not gonna say it like Tupac said, like his mom told him, like Phoenix told Tupac. Mm-hmm. She said, "No, you get with like minded black people mm-hmm. because the majority of people will use the hell out of you. Mm-hmm. Black people don't do nothing but exist, yeah. and they exist to use you because that's how they've been conditioned and trained. So you have to get with like minded black people to be 